Here we are at the Metal Boys with special guest Tim Ripper Owens. Yes. Here in Montreal for a night of metal. Really, I just came here to do this interview. <laughs> okay. I thought I'd throw a show in. The there. show was a bonus. I I'd throw a show in, but. Uh, so what's the story? What is this? What what's a night of metal? You know, this is just one of those those fun kind of nights that is totally different. You know, when I tour solo, I play stuff from from Jugulator, Demolition, my solo CD, Beyond Fear, my Iced Earth stuff. So it's kind of a a tour of my, me doing my stuff. This is the complete opposite. It's just me and Sean and and uh, and Sean Drover and his brother Glenn, and we just do this. Jam, it's just get up and have fun, you know. Is there, is there even a set list, or you got to just set set We're going yeah. to run to the hills next. Then. There's a set list, and we, uh, you know, we learned it today. And um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, we just put in some classics that we like to do and have some fun with. And, uh, and you're going back to Toronto later in this tour. This yeah, this yeah, cross Ottawa, Canada tour. Ottawa and, and, and uh, Toronto, and then home. Three dates. So and then you got Charles, Charles Walls of the Damned. Yeah, that's also, out. Really. Uh, September 23rd, it came out, Metal Blade Records, and, and uh, it's a great record, you know, I mean, it's not too long, it's kind of straight at you, uh, it's it's definitely my favorite of the three we've done, and, um, you know, it's doing well, so it's uh, it's nice to get it out there. Richard Christie and Steve DiGiorgio on bass, and Jason Sukoff, the engineer producer, is on guitar, which is an amazing guitar player. It's our third record, so um, the, the problem is touring with something like this is... Um, you know, it's not that easy because you don't make money in it, you know. I mean, that's the thing people tell me all the time when people don't know, you know, there's always people who think they know what my career should be better than me. You know, there's always these people, I got this, this is what you need to do. You need to be in one band. Well, if I was in one band, I would be working a 60-hour-a-week job at home, and you would never see me tour, you know. Um, it's just not like that. I tour playing my music, and I... I still put records out. And Chard Walls, we'll do some dates, but you know, Richard's on the Howard Stern show, and that's his job. And, and uh, you know, I do, I tour solo most of the time, and that's my main job. So it's hard to fit, fit it in, and if you go on tour, it kind of costs money. You know. And that's funny, because we're talking to the other hardest working man in rock, besides yourself, Blaze Bailey. And he said, when he first met Paul Deano, Paul Deano said the same thing, you'll never be able to keep your band. And, and be able to to work full time. Yeah, it's a different it's a different time. I mean, people don't buy music like they used to. They everybody tours. So when you're, it used to be not as many bands tour. Now they're all touring. You know? So you go out and you know I tried it with Beyond Fear, and uh, you know it's just it, I I need to make a living off of music, and if I'm not going to make a certain amount of money, I'm just going to do something else. You know? yeah. So it's. Uh, it makes it hard, but I keep putting records out. I keep writing records and, and doing other things. So, so you got the priest years, of course. We have to get the questions in. What would have happened if there was a third album for you? What, what, what do you think if, if you would have done a third album with them instead of Halford coming back? Is that something that might have solidified your status in the band? Or? You know, I don't know. You know, the, the one of the problems was when I joined Judas Priest, it was probably the worst time in hard rock and heavy metal there was. I mean, 1996, 97, to, uh, joined in 96, and, and uh, you know, that was just a horrible time. So it doesn't even matter. I mean, Rob wasn't selling, no one was selling. Bands disappeared, you know what I mean? So I don't know what would have solidified it. I mean, it, 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 what happened is exactly what should have happened. I mean, Rob needed to come back to Judas Priest. For himself, he needed to come back to Judas Priest. Judas Priest needed to have Rob come back. And I needed to go out and do other things, you know. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not known as a singer for Judas Priest anymore, but, um, you know, I, I tour more places, I tour the world, I do more shows. Uh, financially, I make more money, everything's great. I don't know if a third record would have, would have changed it, you know. I mean, it would have been great. Listen, I didn't want to, leave Judas Priest. I didn't. I wouldn't have quit Judas Priest. I wanted to leave Judas Priest because I had already recorded the Ice Earth record. Right. So I was. I wanted out of Judas Priest because I wanted to do other stuff, but I never would have quit. You know, because yeah. I'm. You know, I was great friends with him, and I was a singer of Judas Priest. Yeah. You know. Um, but to make more money, and to do more things, I had to to branch out to other things. But I don't know if a third record would have. Uh, it would have been great to do it. You know. I mean. When I had written Beyond Fear, there were songs in there that I had written while I was in Judas Priest, like uh, Save Me and um, Scream Machine, and songs that I think you know could have 
could have been a, a Jewish priest. And, uh, you know, like you get seven years with the band, uh, two live albums. Uh, let's say they want, you know, they, they were supposed to, Epitaph was supposed to be the last tour, and they, now they released other stuff. You know, we, we all wish there's a Judas Priest Festival where, where Tim can come back and sing a few songs, and Rob, is that something that if it ever happened, you'd be happy right. to participate in? Or? I, absolutely, I absolutely would, and the main reason is, uh, I'm friends with all of them, including Rob, you know, and I, and the thing I miss the most out of Judas Priest, um, it's really the only thing, is the friendship, you know, because we were friends. So I would love to do it. I mean, uh, obviously they're not playing Burn in Hell or, or Bloodsuckers or any of these songs, you know, so someone needs to, Cathedral Spires, you know. Fortunately for me, when I tour, my last tour I did in, in the UK, I did Jugulator, uh, Bullet Train, Dead Meat, Death Row, uh, Cathedral Spires, uh, you know, a bunch, I did a bunch, so. But it would be great, it would be pretty awesome to, uh, I don't Dave Holland's in prison though, isn't he? Yeah, so I don't yeah, think he's yeah, gonna yeah, make he it. Be, he might not he be able to make it. He might not make it, but no, it would be pretty awesome. And uh, But uh, I think though, you know, I think they were gonna retire, I think it was gonna be it. But I think when, when, Ken, when KK left, that changed the rules, yeah. you know, I mean, I think they were talking about it, and then you know he left, and it, they were able to, to back out of that and keep touring. I mean, why would you want to stop? Jugulator or demolition? You know, I like them both about equal. Uh, my favorite song probably is Bloodstained, but uh, as songs go, and m me thinking more of Classic Priest, I go with Demolition because of songs like Close to You and Hell is Home and In Between and One on One and Bloodsuckers and Feet on Me and Machine Man. I think all those have more of a Classic Priest now that I listen to them. I didn't think that when it came out, but it's, uh, it's a great record. If there was one, one last thing in Priest, if there's something you could go back, and we asked Blaze the same question, go back and do differently, what would it be? Well, we were all, not, not necessarily myself. First of all, I wouldn't come out on the Harley because the band was like, this is our thing, right? I mean, it's our thing, it's not Rob's thing. We did it as a band, we started it as a band, and I, did, I never really cared for that. But I would, uh, you know, we turned down a lot of uh, OzFest a few years, they didn't want to do it, and I wish they would have done OzFest. You know, yeah. I'm not sure why we turned it down. I think it was in August, and a couple of band members liked the vacation in August or something, so we turned it down. But, but I got to be honest, I, just, I loved it. Listen, I was nominated for a Grammy. I went to the Grammys. Um, I toured the world, and I was a lead singer of Judas Priest. I mean, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I, I, I do this because of that. I tour the world, and um, if I changed anything, that might not happen. And then you went on to Iced Earth, and we were saying earlier, one of my favorites, The Glorious Burden. Uh, how was that, uh, was that like for you? It was great. You know, it was a great transition because you're going to, you're going to a band that was really big in the metal scene. Uh, you know, you didn't have the name recognition with other, with the, like, people in the grocery store that might have heard of Judas Priest. They're more likely not going to have heard, heard of it. I always compared it to this. I think Judas Priest was like playing in the major leagues, and I surf was the minor leagues, and that's not a bad thing. I'm talking still professionals, right? You're, exactly. You know, you're talking, you're still doing. I mean, I surf was great and made the great record. I mean, it was um, fantastic to do it. I learned more off of history of that in that record than I did my whole life in school. You know? <laughs> so uh, it was uh, it was good. You know, I had a good time doing that. I mean, I could, when we interviewed John Schaefer, he got a Canadian interest in American Civil War. You know, you know, I mean, it really is. I mean, and if you know, I went to Gettysburg a few times. We did a photo shoot there, and you know, I went there twice. And it's an, it was an amazing place and to do that, those three songs, and um, then go there. It's pretty. It was pretty crazy. After Judas Priest, I never. Um, I never got depressed. I never got down because Judas Priest was so big. But then you you figure, as I'm being let go from Judas Priest, I'm putting out the glorious burden, 
and headlining, headlining Vakken in front of 68,000 people. So I was playing the same. You actually went up. I was playing the same size crowds in the, in the in the clubs and in the in the theaters and in the venues than I was in Jewish Priest. And then I went from my from my surf to Ingve. Uh, Ingve is totally different from me, and it was a different experience. And I did that for that reason. I did it to draw a whole new fan base into to me because I know Ingve has a different fan base. But again, I went for my stir. Now, when I did get fired from my stir, I thought, what am I going to do now? But joining Ingve, I went right back and put a record out and went touring, touring again, you know? So um, I never really had that. And then after Ingve, I quit Ingve. And now I just, uh, now I don't ever have to worry. I have to work a lot harder now because if I don't get gigs and do this stuff, I don't make any money. But I never had that downtime. I never sat at home and thought, you know, more than maybe a day. I mean, I did get fired a week before Christmas from my stir with no money. So that was a little bit disconcerting, but Wendy Dio sent me a check and said, hey, listen, all right, just get back on your feet. And that was a, that was a week later. I'm, maybe the next day or two days later, I'm flying to Florida to meet Ingve. So, I mean, uh, I never had that experience. I was lucky that, you know, I was in demand, getting a lot of calls, and they weren't the only ones calling me to come and sing for them. So I was getting a lot of different calls, so I was pretty lucky. Uh, and Trinity, I mean, you know, we spoke about Blaze Bailey earlier. What's it like to meet Jeff Tate? I mean, have you met him before the... Yeah, yeah, we were friends, and we had talked uh, for, for years about uh, trying to maybe do something, you know. He, he, we'd mentioned it, but uh, timing-wise could never work out. And this one was even hard because... People keep saying, how come you're just playing those shows and there's a bunch of New York and it's right in that area? Well, that's kind of the reason we're able to fit into this area, into our schedules and come in together. And, uh, Jeff's great. I really, you know, I was friends with all the Queens Right guys and uh, uh, Jeff's great. I mean, I, uh, I get along with him. I admire him. You know, I grew up listening to him. And uh, when we were just together with Jeff, myself and Blaze and shooting that video and uh, <laughs> it was really funny, man. I mean, we, they all have a sense of humor, and we laughed and had a had a great time. In, in the video, I think it comes through in the video. If you're watching it, I mean, it seems like there's a camaraderie there. Yeah, yeah, it was great. You know, I didn't know how it would be, and even doing that song. I mean, it was a last minute kind of a thing, and we thought we it's all little teasers. We do a little bit of a teaser on on his record, and then we do this little teaser of a tour. And I guess the whole main goal is is to make a record and have these three different voices on there. Yeah. And, you know, back in the day, we were talking about uh, Tate and Halford and Dickinson. Well, we got Blaze you know, and uh, Ripper. So, so. Yeah, we're just all we're moving it's all 30 over the years place. later, but it's equally yeah. as good. So. Well, we have this tour coming up in November. We have about 10 shows. And um, and then we're going to, next year, we're going to try to tour, you know, do more shows around the world and Europe and, and like I said, make a record. I mean, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. And Chard, Walls of the Damned. Uh, any tour dates? Uh, like you said, it was difficult. So. Uh... Oh, you know, we don't. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. You know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I got other things I'm working on as well. I got to uh, just to, to say, anybody wants to get a hold of me, uh, Facebook and Twitter and and, uh, and um, Instagram, just Google it because I don't know what the hell the thing that they are. I've, you know, Tim McBrowens. People, people, like, people we'll always go. steal that one, so it's hard to get that on some of them. But. Um, you know, I, I'm working on some songs and a record with Chris Caffrey and Steve DiGiorgio. We're doing a little uh, record on you know, Frontiers, and uh, okay. Roy Z's going to uh, work on it with us. And uh, you know, so and a, another little thing with Dave, with Dave Ellison, where I'm trying little little things, just kind of throwing some ideas around. So you know, have Mike will travel. I keep I keep you know if people say guy. hey you need to put more records out or stick with the band I'm like listen I put so many records out and I sing on so many people's you know albums it's pretty I guess I would rather have that chart I have Project Rock which is the records done we're just waiting it has uh, Rudy Sarzo on bass uh, Kerry Kelly on guitar who him and I wrote the stuff. James Kotek on uh, drums, right. and it's a great, straightforward hard rock record. Uh, so we're just we were getting ready to release it. Then we we're going to change the name, and then we didn't change the name, and so it's sitting there. You know, Carrie's torn with the uh, uh, Project Rock's like Project Driver that Sarzo was in back in the '80s. You know? Yeah. Well, we started this thing is just doing our songs over in Russia. We would tour and each play play. I mean, with Rudy, you could get to play White Snake and Dio and. 
and you know, Quiet Riot and Ozzy, so it's kind of funny, you can play a bunch of hits. But that's how it started, and then Carrie and I wrote the record. It's one of my favorite records I've ever done, and it's just straightforward, kind of hard rock, nothing, you know. I love it, because one minute I do, one minute I do something that's got really heavy vocals, and the next minute I do something that's like more commercialized, so it's kind of cool. And then that album that you said, it's, 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 it's not out, we were getting ready to put it out, and then we had some issues where I don't think uh, James wanted to change the name, and we were just getting ready to change the name. James said no, so we said, okay, but we didn't put it out. Tim Ripper Owens, singer extraordinaire, yeah, worker. I could be a roofer next, I don't know. If I <laughs> Have Mike will travel. Yes. I might be a construction worker on your roads here. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's plenty, probably higher than that. I mean, I thought yeah, that's, that, a, that's a 12 year gig. What, I mean, is, is they just, are they just going to make a tunnel under the whole city? I mean, that would be the ideal. I've never, this is my, we have a lot of construction in Ohio too. And uh, I, I'll come in here and I'm like, wow. This is the traffic cold So capital. listen, I might be a singing, hard hat wearing, <laughs> flag waver, there tunnel digger. I don't know. Hopefully it'll be in the summertime. And Sounds the, like by the village people <laughs> that I am in or something. Or, or, or like a hot rocking video or something. <laughs> Again, thanks, Tim, for this. Thank you. Catch him on Thank tour, you. A Night of Metal, and charred walls of the diamond.